we diagnose patients with polyps? Now, you know the clinical presentation, you know about of the different etiological factors, the syndromic associations. How do we diagnose patients with polyp? Basically, your history, your clinical examination, your endoscopic examination, your CT scan examination are sufficient for your diagnosis. But plain sinus x-rays are not sensitive at all and please do not advise in today's time we do not advise any patient with polyposis to undergo plain x-ray waters view or plain x-ray caldwell's view no we don't do it at all for today's time so it is insensitive and should not be used there is no point ct scanning is the investigation of a choice do we want a contrast or do we want a plain scan we want a plain scan we don't need a contrast because we know polyps are not vascular so a non contrast ct scan has to be done to identify the anatomy before the surgery to understand the disease per se and then endoscopic examination will help you in understanding the diagnosis for sure and mri should be only done only if you are suspect suspecting the possibility of a meningocele, suspecting any intracranial extension of the polyp or the disease, only in this situation will you look for MRI. So history features of such systemic diseases should be taken including lower airway symptom and test for factors associated with nasal polyps should be performed that I have anyways told you and you will have to do you know measure objectively the airflow rate by doing rhinomanometry, acoustic rhinometry, olfactory testing. So these objective tests are very important because you need to have a data pre and post surgery how much was the uh, airflow of the nose and post surgery how much improvement has occurred so objectively you also need to keep an evidence for that now we have a clinical staging system that is there for polyp so if you have a polyp in the middle meatus now again this is an endoscopic scoring system this is not an anterior rhinoscopic scoring system so you have an endoscopic scoring system to tell you how you should score a polyp on endoscopic examination. So if you have a polyp, zero is there is no polyp at all. One is polyp is localized only to the middle meatus and two is if it has gone beyond the middle meatus. So zero is no polyp at all. One is only to the middle meatus and two is beyond the middle meatus. Edema, no edema. If there is mild, you will give it as one and if there is severe edema, two. No discharge is 0, clear discharge 1, thick discharge 2. Then you have scarring, no scarring 0, mild scarring 1 and severe scarring 2. Scarring usually is a sequence of a prior surgery. No crusting is 0, mild crusting is 1 and severe crusting is given the order 2. So this is how you will grade. So you will have to look for presence of polyps, look for the possibility of edema, look for discharge, look for scarring and look for crusting. So pods C if you remember you will be able to get the endoscopic scoring system. So polyp, edema, uh, scarring, crusting and discharge. Now that was your endoscopic or the clinical staging. Now we have a radiological scoring as well. This is by Lund and Mackey scoring where we score for each parameter 0 to 2 where we say that 0 is no opacification, 1 is mild or partial um, opacification and 2 is complete opacification. A maximum score of 12 can be obtained on each side. So if we take the Lund and Mackey scoring system, we take into account the sinuses. So maxillary from frontal, anterior ethmoid, posterior ethmoid, sphenoid and the osteomyetal complex. So we are taking the sinuses and OMC into account. We are not taking the haziness in the nasal cavity. So what we are taking is the PNS, maxillary, anterior ethmoid, posterior ethmoid, sphenoid and the osteomyetal complex. So right and left are separately scored. Now, if you score each of them sinuses on the grading of 0, 1 and 2, what does 0 say? 0 says there is no opacification of the sinuses. It is clear, it is black. Then you say 0. So, when you have a CT, you will keep the CT in front of you. First do the right side, then do the left side or you can do it otherwise as per your wish. 
So maxillary sinus clear, black, no haziness, you will do 0. Little haziness, 1. Full haziness, 2. So give your score. So similarly, all the sinuses 0, 1 and 2 you will score and you can get a maximum score of 12 on each side. And once you get a score of both the sides, you will be understanding is the patient having a severe disease or a mild disease and you will be able to get the score right. 